What is up, bros? We Josh here. In today's video, we are playing the Yu Yang. Yes, the Yu Yang. Is this post all its nerfs? Yes, it's the tier 10 Panish and DD, the now extinct destroyer. Well, at least it seems like that. And we were playing some naval battles, so we decided to play this because uh, not a lot of people in my clan wanted to play Pan Asian DDs, and that's kind of to be expected, and especially didn't want to play the Yu Yang. Now, why is that? The Yu Yang used to be a monster, it used to be my, my favorite tier 10 destroyer. I found it so fun. And I always used to recommend the Pan Asian DD line because the line itself was so fun. You have some great ships on that line, like the Gajamada at tier uh, 7. Uh, you have the uh, Chengmu at tier 9. And even the Yu Yang was kind of this reward, this cherry on top at, at, at being an insanely strong tier 10 DD because it really didn't have a weakness. Now, it has deep water torps. It's one of the things that the Pan Asian line has. You have these deep water torps, so you can't actually hit destroyers. But what this thing lacked in potency wise against DDs, it made up for with its DPM of its guns. So at the time, it was, and this is one of my favorite ships, and I will accept this fact, is the Yu Yang was a tad too strong. It was overpowered, and you could see that by how effective it was in clan battles, it was effective in rank battles. It was just an effective DD and a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and so with the ship itself, it went through kind of some nerfs. And it kind of hit everything on the ship. The strength of its torps were, the strength of its ship was it had low detection, it had good smokes, and it was the first time we've seen short duration smokes, but a lot of them. That was kind of the thing that pointed this out, but the, the line was relatively stealthy and uh, had good torps against basically everything. Deep water torps, which were a new thing. And it had DPM on its guns, or damage per minute on its guns, to make up for what it couldn't do against destroyers. So, it it was kind of this jack of all trades and didn't really have a weakness and one of the main things was is it kind of just picked on gearings it was an absolute counter to gearings because of how the armor on these ships work you would have you could actually use your ap on this ship and rip three four k salvos on a gearing with ap as long as they were giving you broadside and the gearing would just get a lot more overpens and it wouldn't be able to do as much damage so you kind of just countered this gearing but what ended up happening is they nerfed its guns and its torpedo both on its reload and it really really felt it but then what happened after it is it was overpowered and kind of got brought down back to reality and then once it was brought back down to reality some other things happened reality got buffed and what i mean by that is more and more buffs happened to the other tier 10 dds so when it used to recount when it used to counter uh the gearings the gearings got their legendary module now what did that do it brought the detection from 5.9 which the yu yang used to barely out detect but it could always get the first salvo on so the the gearing would get a detection of 5.6 with its detection so it would lose that effectiveness also the shima which this thing kind of used to counter as well as you would be so close the shimakaze with a 5.6 this would have a 5.8 kilometer detection it'd be so close that it would just obliterate shimas but then the Shima got a buff to its guns. So, and then, well, let's just, so two of its normal, normal prey got buffed. And then what ended up happening is the Daring came out and the Daring pretty much just kind of countered the ship. It was just better at everything it did. Um, the Pan, er, the Pan Asian line was known for its short duration smokes, but a lot of them, the Royal Navy line just does that better. And so this thing has really, the stock of this ship has really just fallen and uh, you can definitely feel it even when you play it. You can even get to, like bullied by uh, by tier eight ships. You go against a Cossack, you're actually gonna have a tough time against a Cossack. Even go against uh, a Benson now or anything. And especially, even if you go against a Chengmu, if the Yu Yang goes against its tier nine tech tree counterpart, you are at a disadvantage because you can do less damage per minute or DPM than those ships can. That's kind of the situation with the Yu Yang, but I still have a place in my heart, and I really think the Yu Yang overall should maybe get a buff and kind of, it doesn't need to obviously be what it was, but I think they should kind of turn back because what they ended up doing was nerfing it compared to what there was and then change what there was, if that makes any sense. So they kind of, you know, focused on leveling it down, which it was above average, but then, <laughs> but then they basically buffed everything around it so now it's just even worse so um but you really you rarely see these anymore and it's kind of a bummer because it was so strong and it was so fun and i really liked the play style but this game was pretty crazy because it had been so long since i've really played it because i have no real incentive to play it and you kind of just this game blew me away I mean, it, it felt like old yu yang 
and uh, you just really don't get to play that anymore. Now, we did get in a pretty good situation. Uh, we ended up having a decent team. It was actually a really good game, this one, uh, but you'll see us already at 77k damage in five minutes that Jean Bart flooded out. We're just kind of playing this spot correctly. We've already shot down 17 planes, too, so that's pretty nice. Actually, the, the Yu Yang kind of had decent AA. Um, so it kind of was a little effective against that, but uh, I'm not going to be pushing in against that Grozovoy because even the Grozovoy with the higher detection kind of just out DPMs it, and uh, and now there's ship that you're going to have a tough time against. But overall, this thing is a shadow of what it used to be, and it does kind of bump me out. I would love to see them buff this a little bit more because there's really no reason why a tier nine should be better than a tier ten, and uh, even in the, like a one v one fight, not even play style or tier for tier. Uh, but uh, Overall, the, the Yu Yang is... It, it's just a, a shadow of it once was, I guess. I don't want to keep it. But overall, this game was pretty sick. Um, it was a really close one and really just had a fun time playing it. And although it, it isn't going to kind of rekindle the love of me playing this ship, I have kind of no real interest in playing this ship anymore because really, if you play it, you're at a disadvantage. But it was almost like a time capsule of what the ship kind of used to be. And that was really like the best part. Uh, but overall, still kind of farming, watching our battleships get uh, absolutely obliterated because they're just sailing broadside to Stalingrad and a Zao and a Massachusetts and a Republic. So they're going to go do that, and we're going to try to get this game under control. Their CV obviously knows what he's doing because uh, he keeps going for their destroyers. But we do have the kill lead, and we do have a uh, point lead, although we're going to pretty quick. But I'm going to use the quick uh smokes on this we have one coming up as well we're gonna try to watch out now see our conqueror goes down if we can get a fire on that stalingrad 2 we can get a uh, a nice little uh damage done on him because i we just put a fire on him as well so um <laughs> and it is funny uh we just got done with arms race ranked mode and uh it's it's kind of uh it's kind of funny to like think you're kind of want or going hey is anybody like, you're gonna get that healing buff you look down and you're almost kind of expecting it but there's the radar right there we're gonna have to be a little careful but we can kind of just dip away and and we dodge that first shot so we gotta be a little careful though stalling guy with the 11.7 kilometer range for now and um we can't just be kind of hanging there so a little bit of luck chuck torps but if we get to 11.7 11.8 we'll be good to go and be relatively safe Sadly, I don't think any of those torps hit. But we got to go back and get that cap, though, because we have just lost the Conqueror. And um, we basically switched. Uh, yeah. As as the Jean Bart, again, is sailing broadside. And we have a Wooster sailing broadside as well. So a little bit of a bummer, but our team is making it happen. And um, it's been pretty even so far. But I think our Wooster is about to YOLO. Uh, but overall, just kind of maybe potentially giving up on this on this cap right here because we got to rotate over but you know you kind of look at what we're going against right now is we're going against a jean bart gearing and a grozovoy i have a tough time against basically all of those ships i have a tough time as a yank now in the past gearing never scared of it uh grozovoy grozovoy kind of countered the um oh we did end up in one the grozovoy kind of countered the uh um i'll be honest that is one thing i never i never uh, that never gets old is, is randomly chucking those deep water torps out and getting a torp hit. These things are so good at uh, just being insane monsters because their detection range is so low. I'll never get that, never gets old. You get so many torp hits when it comes to this, your damage ends up being relatively crazy. It's hard to avoid them because you just don't see them. And um, if you can still get into a spot, it is, and obviously our Wooster just kind of yellowed into there, and a bit of a bummer on that. Um, but uh, going against like a Gearing, a Gearing's not an easy pick anymore because honestly, a Gearing can defend itself better than it used to because it can, um, because it can now get into a spot where it just out detects you. So you can honestly never find it um, unless you have a great location or something like that. Uh, and here we go. We have to start the comeback now. What have we lost so far? Let's look at that really fast. The Conqueror, the Wooster, and a Wichita. So, not too surprising. Our Conqueror sailed broadside, got farmed, and uh, our Wooster pushed into ACAP when half their team was there. He got killed. Then our Jean Bart is on the backside. I'm not too surprised that the Wichita got killed. It's a newer premium, so uh, the player base for that tends to be kind of uh, lackluster. But we do have a couple ships we know are kind of low. 
and we are in a good spot. So I'm just trying to finish off that stall Greg, because no one else would focus it. Um, getting away, getting those ships away is uh, something we kind of need to do. But uh, those radar ships, at least. But um, again, though, looking at Grozovoy was always kind of a counter to the Yu Yang because it had such a big health pool. It could pump out a lot of damage and also take a lot of damage. Gearings, I was never scared of. Bensons, I was never scared of. But now, those are new threats to this DD. So you almost feel, I wouldn't say helpless. Helpless is, is a pretty strong, um, a pretty strong word. But I would say you don't feel as comfortable in this ship. And um, I would love to see just like, I would love to see, maybe it doesn't need to quite go back to what it was, but I would love to see some of the nerfs kind of undone because the reason for the nerfs and the balancing around the nerfs ended up being something that um, was nullified with the buffs to said ships. And uh, that's something that I would kind of love to see Wargaming maybe think about doing and um, kind of bring back Yu Yang to its glory. It doesn't need to quite get back to its old glory, as I say, but it does. I mean, it still can obviously compete but uh and obviously in rank battle or in random battles it's a much different situation i mean things are going to be in spots where you can continue to farm and do stuff like that but in other spots it's something that you really need to be um, careful on balancing because if something is just extremely weak then uh you're going to have a tough time having them be even competitive so um our uss kid doesn't know what radar is so we're going to bail from this and uh, we're hopefully, luckily all their DDs are super low. USS Kid is going to think get me in trouble. I tried to get away from this, but I think he's going to get flopped here. That's on him for not paying attention. But uh, we see the gear in. We'll go focus on that. I think our Moscow goes kind of hand load. And um, a little bit of a bummer, though. It seems like our CV was maybe not focused DDs as much. Our kid might get away if he can. Maybe that's a blopper right there. Um, but still. Uh, you you have tools. It's just you just don't feel kind of safe. I guess it, you just feel so uncomfortable playing this ship. It feels so awkward, and uh, you just feel like you better not run into. Again, it it shouldn't be that you when you're playing a tier ten DD that you're nervous about a tier seven, and that could easily be something too. But again, there is nothing better <laughs> than than when a cruiser especially even a radar cruiser just has no idea they're about to just get torped to hell and um i do love that and will never never uh that'll never get old to me but um there's one we snagged two they're just so hard to avoid still but what ended up happening is they added uh it was about a 33 it was about a third longer on its reload and then it was a uh, about i think 20 or 30 seconds longer on its torp reload so not only was it effective once I thought that maybe if they nerfed the torps and then kept the guns or vice versa, I felt like the double nerf was a tad unfair. And um, we got a little, I think we ended up snagging this. We lost our, this was this was really, really sketchy for a second. Um, but already at 137k going against the Benson and uh, we lost our USS Kid. We lost, <laughs> there's just so much going on right now. And um, and we have a CV as well going for me, but we're actually good. I think we get out of this game with no kills. I think all of our all of our shit, all of our kills got stolen. Um, but really, we're in a good spot right now, which is really good. And the CV is continuing to go for me, so juke that, which is awesome. And we're even shooting down some more planes with this as well. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I would have been in the, kind of the same spot if uh, if I would have been in a different DD. That's one thing I was trying to think. Would I have been in the same spot as a gearing? Yeah, probably. Um, potentially even would have done more damage uh, because of the amount of torps I would have been able to launch. But who knows, maybe the deep water torps were still a situation uh, that is kind of carry. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what you guys think about the UK. Um, do you still play it on a consistent basis? Have you sold it? Have you put it into, you know, is it just a port queen right now? What is the Yu Yang to you guys? Because I would love to see some potential buffs to this ship. Because to me, it just seems like it is just so lackluster. I, I've been, played it for a few times. I remember one of the games I played, and it was just so... Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do anything because the enemy team had a, had a two toe sacks. Now maybe, is it just because a couple of the tier 8 DDs are too strong? I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, and actually one thing that was kind of funny is that uh, I was playing on playing the Sean Bart, uh, but it brought up... Um, I was playing on playing... There's a Wither or two. I was playing on playing the Jean Bart, and it brought up uh, it brought up the Yu Yang on accident. So the the port actually made me play the Yu Yang. It was actually quite funny. 
And um, that was the Groza Void. I thought that was dead right here. A bit of a bummer. If it was old Torps, we would have had Torps right there. But um, we ended up getting saved by our downtown Moskva. So that's always awesome. But we're hanging on here. We're trying to hang on. And one thing that's awesome, and that a couple of these I had uh, the other day, is having close games. It, it, it just feels like games are so one-sided these days that having close games are so rare and um, it kind of bums me out because when you get games like this where your team is working together and you're focusing targets and you're finishing off and working together and uh, and, and just trying to survive and lock down areas and pumping out torps right here these games just feel so weird now i ended up putting out the torps on the stalingrad it's a much scarier person and player than the massachusetts now we had limited time, but I figured with the Moscow South, with this guy sitting on broadside, the Ibuki up north, I could probably, um, uh, I could probably just live for long enough. And um, if I could put Torps on that Stalingrad who's sailing in a straight line, I could maybe do get a depth strike on him. Well, not really a depth strike, but some more damage. But that was somebody I wanted to push north because if they go north, that means we can kind of lock in um, the win, and we end up snagging another Torp. Again, that's probably just a torp we would have hit only with, uh, only with the Yu Yang, and we end up going over and getting a cap. Um, but this game was just—it seemed like a blast from the past, honestly, and it was just so much fun to play a ship that hasn't felt like this in a long time. It was such a good kind of feeling, and um, it was kind of cool. But really, even with some of the games that I've been playing. It feels so rare to get games like this. So rare to get games like this. And uh, that kind of almost bums me out a little bit. But the CV will end up getting me here. But I will end up uh, hiding from them and uh, not getting killed. The Ibuki finishes off the Stalingrad, which is awesome. And just a fun overall game to uh, <laughs> to just show this, this ship. And uh, honestly, I have no real interest in playing this outside naval battles because... Um, it still can compete, but it just really isn't as fun and just really isn't the ship that it used to be. And I just really, I don't know. I just have no real interest in playing this anymore. If I want to play a DD, I'll play the Daring. If I want to play a DD, I'll play the Gearing with the Legendary Module. Um, even I'd rather play the Shima than the Yuang right now. And that means a lot. If you've ever been to my stream, you know exactly how I feel about the Shima. But um, it was pretty cool to see kind of something that the Yuang kind of could do. We end up having some perfect scenarios right here, and uh, we ended up getting the uh, the cap right here and just kind of staying alive. The CV does end up getting us, but we get the cap anyway, and we lock in the win, which is really all we kind of need. I'm surprised the Zao didn't continue north. That's what I would have done and trying to kill the CV because they have to kill out, But uh, and he's going to end up getting it, but it doesn't matter. We got the cap. That's all that matters. <laughs> we ended up shooting down a lot of planes, which is kind of cool um, with the Yu Yang. And I was hoping to pray to RNG to save me right here. But a 2K on a uh, Shokaku. Oh no, we end up surviving just a little bit more. Um, uh, what for that? And we try to stay just dark long enough, but he does line it up. And uh, we actually even turn off our A, but he does get the snipe right here, I think. Yeah, I think he does get it right here. So a really, really good shot, actually, um, by that CV. But uh, overall, overall, it felt so good to actually have a good game in the... Uh, it felt so good to have a good game in the Yu Yang, and um, it, it's been so long since I've really had it. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Yu Yang. Uh, it was kind of a, it was kind of like a time capsule of uh, of playing and having the ship be effective. Uh, now, and I even say in chat, you guys can't see it, but I even say in chat, wow, I made the Yu Yang work because it just feels like it's so like a square peg round hole when it comes to even the current game and current gameplay. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, just another fun game. We kind of want to show you this and have some fun. And uh, I guess maybe the Yu Yang could still work. I just have no real kind of interest in playing it because other things are so much better, though. Um, but anyways, I want to let you know, show you a fun game, and kind of get your guys' thoughts on the Yu Yang. Would you guys like to see it buffed a little bit again? I feel like it's just so underperforming and potentially one of the worst tier 10 destroyers now. Um, and I feel like games like this although can still happen, but are much rarer than other ships having the same performance. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Yu Yang, but wanted to show you a fun one. But anyways, dudes, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.